In today's video, we're going to be using the sketch tools and constraint tools, uh, as well as the appearance and joint tools built inside Fusion 360 to create these simple acrylic photo frame stands, which you can actually go into your workshop and make yourself. Welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is open a new design. Straight away off the bat, this will be a top-down model example, so we're going to save it, and we'll call this YouTube Demo. I suggest you save yours with your name and photo frame. Okay, the first thing we need to do is create a new component. Now we can do that by clicking on the assembly drop down tool and clicking new component. But there's a quicker way by right clicking at the top of the tree on the left hand side on the parent file, right clicking and going new component. We'll do it the old way first, we'll do the next one the other way that I've just shown you. Once the dialog box is open you want to type in here frame, so select that and click OK. You can see now that the part has appeared in the in the tree on the left hand side underneath the parent file which is called YouTube uh, channel model. Okay, and we've got the photo frame here. So let's get started. We need to create a sketch and you'll notice that I am in Z up. Okay, if you need to change that you'll have to go to your preferences which is in your name to do that. I'm going to click on the front plane here which is the red for X axis, blue for Z and click on that there. We're going to create a line and we can see the line tool and the shortcut key is L. All right, So if you want to click the keyboard, L is the shortcut key. Uh, we drag vertically and remember do not click and hold your mouse. Click it once and let go and drag up. Many mistakes I see with students learning this is they hold onto the mouse key and uh, it creates problems. Now what we can do here, we can select our drop down in the middle of the screen here and change that to fit. You'll notice the shortcut key is F6, but whenever we click fit you can see that we can bring it back quite easily and it should never disappear off your screen. And I, and I have seen instance, instances where student, students have uh, zoomed right in or right out and lost their model. Okay, Remember that little fit button down the bottom there. Okay, so we're going to do another straight line. Remember the shortcut key is L. And I've got snap to grid turned on and you can see that I'm snapping to the grid. If you need to change yours, it lives in the grid section here and you can see that I've got snap to grid turned on. And here we go. I'm just going to drag up and I'm just going to click my mouse there to terminate it. And you'll notice here if I keep moving my mouse, it wants to draw a straight line. So I can come across here and click that little green check checkbox or I can just press the escape key and it'll do the same thing. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to make this line equal to that line. So we click the equals constraint and we're going to say that line and that line will be equals, which means they're the same length. However, you can see I have a black line and a blue line. So black lines mean fully constrained, blue lines mean underdefined, all right? Or fully defined and underdefined, okay? So you'll notice here that I can move my blue line around. So I want to make these points the same height. To do that, I'm going to click this button here, horizontal vertical, and click the black dot on top of the black line and the white dot on top of the blue line. And you see now that they're both locked down. We want to create a three-point arc now. So we can go create, arc, three-point arc. We can click the first black dot, let go of the mouse, click the second black dot. Remember to let go of the, of the click on the mouse, don't hold it down. And we can drag this up until we're right, okay? So a nice arc up here. Now, there is another way we can do this. Now, if I use the trim tool, which is the scissors here, so the shortcut key for trim would obviously be T, I can press my L for line key. Now, watch what happens when I click and hold. I'll go to the top of my black dot, I'll click and hold the mouse, and notice what happens. I start to get this curving arc, and so I can do that as well. However, for new users, you might want to use the three-point arc tool. You'll probably find that easier. At the moment, you can see I'm still in the line command. To get out of that, I press escape key on my keyboard. We want to dimension that now, and dimension lives over here under the create tool, and you'll notice the shortcut key is D. I'm going to click over here, and we're going to type in for this dimension here, we're going to type in um, 3.5, and hit enter. All right. So now you can see what happened when I did that. All my lines have turned now turned black and we now know that this is a fully defined sketch and it will not move. Okay, 
So we need to cre create a duplicate line now. So we're going to click up here in the modify and go offset. And when I click that first line that I drew, notice that the whole ch it changes and goes blue. We can drag in, okay, or we can drag out. Okay, what we want to do here is type in negative 3, so minus 3, and click OK. And you can see now that Fusion has duplicated those lines and they've put them inside there. Okay, by using the scroll wheel I can zoom in or zoom out. And I'm on a Mac here today, so uh, with my center mouse button here I can actually click and drag and drag it around my screen. We need to create a line from the left hand side all the way to the right hand side. And this is getting us to learn the trim tool as well. So I click the straight line drawing tool, shortcut key is L, and I click that dot there, you'll notice that the line has appeared. I'm going to drag it right across to the other side and just terminate it there. I'm going to come straight up here now and click on the scissor tool, which is the trim tool, and we want to delete that little section there in the middle. Okay, so what you can see now with Fusion, we have a fully valid profile, and you can see that because it's turned blue, so it's a valid profile, and that means it's ready to do something. Okay, so we can finish sketch. And I'm going to just come back in here to my home view, see the view cube over here where I'm clicking and moving around, and there's the home button there. We're going to extrude that, and we can click create, because now we're in the solid uh, part of Fusion 360. Uh, shortcut key is E. We can drag that out here as well. We can type in 100, so 100 millimeters, and hit the enter key. What we want to do now is we want to put an appearance on our model. Okay, We want to turn that to clear acrylic because the photo will live in the inside here Okay, and you should be able to view it. Okay, You, you put two photos in, you can view it on both sides. So if we come over here to modify, you can see that the appearance lives under modify all the way down the bottom. It looks like a beach ball with multiple colours. But you'll notice the shortcut key is A, A for appearance. And this is quite common themed throughout Fusion 360. They'll use whatever the, whatever the function starts with, the letter, that will be the letter on the keyboard. Okay, there are some exceptions, but, you know, nine times out of ten, this is the exception that works, or exception to the rule. I'm going to type in here now acrylic, clear acrylic, and we're going to drag and drop clear acrylic straight onto that model, and then press the escape key to get out of that. And you can see now that I've got the photo frame, clear acrylic, and it's looking quite well. Okay, so it's time now to create our new component, and this is where a lot of students will go wrong. Furthermore, they'll forget to click Save. So make sure you regularly save your model, because you never know when your computer might fall over and crash, or you lose power from the grid. So we need a new component, so we can click on Assembly, New Component, or remember, it's much easier now, go to the top of the tree, right-click over here and go New Component. And this time we're going to type in Base, Okay, you'll notice now that my photo frame has now gone opaque or it's sort of um, opaqued out so you can't see it that much. And you can see now that my base is now checked, okay? So we need to create a sketch and we're going to pick that front plane again, all right? Remember the shortcut key for line is L. And I'm just going to draw mine out from here for you to show you one thing. And we're going to type in 60, enter. L for line again, so L key, L for line, drag out here and just terminate anywhere and stop that. Remember we want to make this line equal to that line so we use the equal key, we click that line first, that line second. And we now have two lines to validate that we can use the inspect tool, we can click on that line and scroll down a little bit and you can see that I can validate that, that the constraint worked and that line is now equivalent to the other line or equal to the other line. We need to put a degree dimension on these two points now. So remember the shortcut key for dimension is D. We click that line first, let go of the mouse, let go of the click button. Drag over to the other line, click it once and let go of the mouse. Drag up and click. So that will be three clicks of your mouse to get to, work, to, get to that step right there. Type in 60, enter. All right, so now I can press escape to get out of that dimensioning tool. We're going to use the fillet tool here, which lives under the sketching environment, under the modifier, so fillet. And I commonly usually don't use this tool, but in this instance, I think it will work fine. We want to click the point of the V. You can see as I click the point, we get a red fusion preamp. So, oh, you want to put a fillet there. Yes, I do. So I click it. What I'm going to type in here now, I'm going to type in um, three millimetres. And it's going to be 3.5 and type in enter. All right. So 
what we're going to do now, we are going to do an offset on that, create an offset. We're going to click that here and type in 3mm because the plastic we're using is 3mm thick. Okay, so what we can do now, we can see here that it's not a valid profile because we need to close these ends here, okay? And what I like to say is shut the gate, all right? You can see here if I click that point, I'm using my line command tool, okay? I want to close the gate there. I zoom in, I'm going to click here and bring that line to that point. And notice now that once the gate is shut, I have a valid profile. The entire sketch turns blue, which means I can do something with it. So finish sketch, back to our home key. E for extrude, drag that out, we're going to type in 100 again, that will be the width of our plastic. And now we need to put an appearance on this, so A is the shortcut key for appearance. And I don't know about you, but I might pick a yellow plastic for this one, okay? And plastic glossy yellow, and that's what I like. Press the estate tool, back to a home view. Now, notice here now I need to put a joint on here. Now joints assemble things together. All right, now, to do that, though, I'm going to go to a parent level, okay? So I'm going to go right up the top here and click that little button there. So now I'm in the parent, uh, you know, modelling of the project, and I'm out of the component level, okay? If I come back in here, I can activate each component individually, but I want to activate it at a parent level, all right? So let's apply some joints. Now joints live in assembly and there's the little icon there. You can click on that or drop down and go joint or use the shortcut key which is J. Okay. And first thing we're going to do here is turn on our origin on the left hand side and we're going to put a joint on the yellow base to the origin and we're going to turn off the frame. So what I'm turning on and turning off if you look in the tree is the, is the eye. See that it looks like an eyeball. I'm going to turn the frame eyeball off. So now you can see the origin is showing and only the base is showing. And you can see my joints want to coin around. Grabbing my view cube, I'm just going to rotate under and I want to grab the center of that base there. Then I click the home button and then I want to click that dot there on the origin. Now the origin must be turned on or it won't show. See the eye on origin? And I click that and watch the magic of television. And we click OK. So there's my base mated or jointed to the origin. I'm going to turn the origin eye off and turn the frame eye on. This time now I want to place a joint on the photo frame and on the base. So joint. Watch when I touch the face of the photo frame. Okay, notice that it starts corning all over the place. So when you touch the face, hold down the control key or command key if you're using a Mac and you want to snap it. There's the middle. I want to snap it in the middle of the bottom right there. Okay, then I'm going to come around to this corner of the view cube and I touch the face of the base. Notice it wants to coin around. Okay, hold the control key or the command key on a Mac and click that one there. We're going to click OK. Now, when we go to the home view, you can see I've got a nice isometric uh, portrayal of my photo frame. But for me, I don't like the positions on, so I'm going to make a little amendment. If you notice in my timeline, I can read this and your, your instructor or teacher will do the same. They can see you've made a new component, sketch, extrude, component, sketch, extrude, joint, joint. That's the joint I want to edit. So I'm going to right click on that and go edit joint. And here with degrees, I'm going to turn that to zero and click OK. And I think that's a much better view for me to model that today. Remember to click save. Now, if you want a take a screenshot of that for your teacher or instructor, I'd suggest doing this. Click on File, click on Capture Image, and I'll turn off Transparent. Transparent is really good if you're doing videos, but I'll turn Transparent off and we can click OK, and that will save it. I can export that to Downloads and save that and show my teacher or my instructor that you've completed this tutorial. Hope you found today's tutorial interesting and uh, good luck doing it, and I'll see you on the next design, creativity and technology video. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.